Good evening, everybody. I'm Kevin Godby. I'm the publisher and editor of uh, PipesMagazine.com, which is an, an online uh, digital magazine. So we, we, don't, we don't actually print, but, uh, well, raise your hand if you like to read articles about pipes and pipe tobacco. Okay, good. Um, first, well, a couple things. I brought some Dunhill My Mixture that's 14 years old from the London store back when Murray's was uh, still doing the blends. Uh, anybody that wants to try it can raise your hand or I'll, we'll set it over here and pass it around. It's, 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 it's all Virginia. It's got, a li it's, got a, it's got a slight berry top note and it has a little kick to it. I also have my cards if you guys want to pick them up. Um, but first I want to uh, start off by thanking uh, Jim Bennington and uh, Peter for inviting me down. Uh, they've been inviting me persistently for the last year and a half, so I figured I'd better finally show up. Um, and I have good news. Uh, the good news is that the pipe hobby is growing, and it has been for, for the past few years. Uh, you know, and I think there was uh, some concern, uh, legitimate concern for a while, especially for people in the business, wondering if pipe smoking was going to go away. Because even today, if you, you walk up to somebody on the street and say, okay, describe a pipe smoker to me, they're probably going to just describe a grandfather type figure smoking on a park bench. So it still has the stereotype of it's an old man's uh, pastime. And Look at me when you say that. <laughs> and, and also, you know, and, and it really was, it wasn't a decline from, uh, even I was at Bennington's today, and, uh, you know, Jim was telling me how, you know, it just was in the steep decline for decades. Uh, numbers that I have are like from the mid 70s to about 2003, there was about a 90% decline in pipe smokers. Back to the good news, from 2003 to 2010, there's about a 38% increase in pipe smokers. So that's good, obviously, because that gives pipe makers, pipe factories, tobacco blenders, tobacco manufacturers, gives them more incentive to produce more products. And I think you, you may have noticed there's more tobaccos and pipes to choose from today than there were maybe 10 years ago and even longer. <coughs> now. How do I know this stuff? Well, some of it's uh, anecdotal from traveling around the country, visiting different retail tobacconists. Uh, Jim even told me today that for the first time in a long time, he's actually have to, has to keep a closer watch on his pipe inventory. Uh, and he told me he's noticed more guys coming in, younger guys coming in. It's not just uh, the more mature customers any longer. Um, but there's also, interestingly enough, there's a uh, uh, empirical evidence, ironically, coming from the CDC. That's the Center for Disease Control. Uh, they are not really a fan of tobacco. But they conduct uh, an annual survey in the U.S. And, and just an interesting note as part of that survey, uh, in case you're ever wondering, like everybody knows the cigar market's much bigger than the pipe smoker market. Uh, there are, in, in 2010, there are one-sixth the amount of pipe smokers as cigar smokers. So the cigar market is six times larger. But what's interesting is what they do, they survey tobacco use. So that includes cigarettes, cigars, and people that smoke tobacco in pipes. When they, when you take all the numbers combined, uh, pipe smokers are obviously the smallest uh, part of that market. It's actually less than 1%. It's 0.8% pipe smokers and then cigars, then of course cigarettes is the biggest. But what's really interesting, when you isolate the 18 to 24 year old group, percentage doubles, it's almost 2%. Wow. From less than one, it goes up to 1 1.8. So 18 to 24 year olds are uh, three times more likely to smoke uh, pipes than other age groups. So that's good news, the hobby's growing. Um, what I do is I'm the editor and publisher of PipesMagazine.com, as I told you, and in that capacity, I, I uh, have the fortunate opportunity to find out things like that, but also to uh, find out a lot of information. And I'm going I'm to get into some more details on that to tell you about what's going on in the pipe hobby. Uh, but first, a little background on Pipes Magazine. Who, who here is a member of Pipes Magazine? Okay. There we go. How about who, who reads Pipes Magazine? Okay, 
Well, hopefully we'll have some we'll have some more hands by the time I'm done. Um, it is a magazine, digital only. Uh, but what's nice about being online is, in addition to uh, professionally expert penned articles with beautiful photography of pipes, uh, we also have videos. Some of the videos include factory tours of Orlick, Mac Barron. They're, those are like two of the biggest factories in the world. It's just like amazing. Just We actually had to do two-part video and a three-part video because their factories are so huge. Um, so you can see the inner workings of them, how they produce pipe tobaccos in Denmark, in Orlick and Mac Barron. Uh, and then we also have uh, one of the American factories, Cornell and Deal in North Carolina. We have a factory video tour. Uh, and there's uh, several other videos as well. I don't know if anybody's ever watches the show Mad Men, but it's set back in the times where you could smoke wherever you want it, whenever you want it. And one of their past characters was a pipe smoker, and I found out he's a pipe smoker in real life. So I even have an interview with uh, one of the actors from AMC TV's Mad Men. Um, in addition to articles, photos, and videos, uh, we also have uh, model photo shoots. We have pipe babes, which sometimes are sometimes are controversial, sometimes are not. Um, so, I, I, and the reason we do is because I consider us not to just be a hobbyist magazine, but uh, from day one I always consider this to be, you know, when, when you segment uh, magazine audiences, men's entertainment is one of those segments. Like Maxim Magazine would be men's entertainment. Well, I want Pipes Magazine to also be men's entertainment as well as hobby. And, and I want it to be entertainment. So that's part of the entertainment. Also, uh, we are the only place that I know of right now where you can find pipe cartoons, new cartoons, not, not cartoons from like the 50s, but new ones that we publish. We publish four, four a month, so almost every week. And one of those, the first one that goes up every month, is the cartoon caption contest, where you can fill out a form and submit your own caption, and you can win a pipe. There's three winners, of three, uh, so three people win a pipe every month. So I think that's the only place uh, you can participate in something like that, and then and just laugh at the other cartoons. Uh, you know, so it's articles, information, advice, entertainment, and it's also breaking news. So if you're not reading Pipes Magazine and you think you might be interested in the latest news in the pipe industry, PipesMagazine.com is the place to find it. Um, two or three, I don't know, maybe last month sometime, we broke the news. Uh, we had the exclusive breaking news on Mac Barron Tobacco Company buying what used to be called Altidus, which is now Sutliff. Uh, we broke that news. We broke the news of pipes and cigars being bought by Cigars International. And just last Friday, we broke the news that, Mac, that Capstan Tobaccos and Three Nuns, which have been very popular, but not available in the United States for almost 20 years, are switching production houses from Orlick to Mac Barron, and Mac Barron is going to export it to the U.S. and have it distributed through their new division, Sutliff. So that came out on Pipes Magazine first. Uh, so there you have it. That's that's all the things that we we do, and we just like a just like a print magazine. Even though we don't print, we have a regular publishing schedule. So you know, every Monday there's a new cartoon. At the beginning of the month there's a new article by uh, GLPs uh, and Russ Willett, two tobacco blenders that write for us. Uh, mid month is a new pipe babe goes up. So we have a, a regular schedule. Uh, and what's really kind of neat, again, when I was talking to Jim today at the store, he, we were talking about the cigar boom back in the 90s, and he was telling me how Marvin Shankin was like, just hit it right at the right time when he came out with Cigar Aficionado. And, and I think most people agree that Cigar Aficionado kind of helped the cigar boom, and the cigar boom helped Cigar Aficionado. Same thing's happening with Pipes Magazine. So even though I work real hard at it, I think I got a little lucky too. The timing was right. I launched in January 09, uh, and right at the same time was when uh, younger guys were getting interested in pipe smoking again. So what do you think the first thing a 20-something is going to do after he smokes his first pipe? He's going to go online looking for information. And now that Pipes Magazine is the largest repository of online information on pipes and pipe tobacco, they can't help finding us. So let me give you some numbers that might be interesting. Uh, I'll start off with uh, you know, print magazines have circulation numbers. Websites or digital magazines have traffic numbers. 
So uh, to put it into perspective, bringing up cigar aficionado again, uh, forgetting the circulation because I don't do print, but their website, cigarfishinato.com, gets an average of 5,000 unique visitors per day, or 150,000 a month, so 5,000 a day. Currently, Pipes Magazine gets 13,000 a day. Wow. So almost three times what Cigar Aficionado gets. In a market one-sixth the size, thanks. Yeah, so, um, and we get, uh, like in the early days, we're going on, we're on year four. We're three and a half years old. Uh, at the beginning of year three, it became my full-time job. Um, <clears throat> So, yeah, and it keeps growing. I mean, w when we hit 5,000 and we were equal with Cigar Aficionado, I was blown away. And, I, and if anybody ever, ever would have told me I'd be equal to them, I, I didn't believe it. And then Greg Pease was telling tell me one day, he said, well, you know, you're going to hit 10,000 one day. And I said, never, ever, ever will that happen. And now we're 13,000. So, oh, in addition to, uh, you know, more 20-somethings and younger guys getting interested in uh, smoking pipes, What's really interesting is more females are getting interested in smoking pipes too. Although there's still a very small segment, it's like one to two percent. It used to be like, you know, 0 0.001 percent. Um, in the first couple of years, we would get uh, maybe 10 people signing up. And, and oh, by the way, it's all free. This is free. So I'm not selling anything. This is all free. It's, it's advertising supported. Uh, you don't have to. Uh, be logged in or be a member to access any of the content. All the content's freely accessible. Uh, but if you uh, are a member, then you can comment on articles. You can participate in the forums. We also have forums. Um, in the early days, we'd get about 10 members a week signing up. Now we get 10 a day. Uh, on busy days, we get up to 20 a day. We used to get about 10 females signing up in a year. Now we get about four to six a month. So, pardon me while I make sure I don't forget anything important. <laughs> okay, yeah, let me give you some, some specific numbers that might. It's getting better all the time.